Okay, welcome to the HTC count tutorial. I'm going to start my terminal session here in Jupyter Lab, and let's take a look around and see what we have here. Okay, so we have a bunch of files. Uh, the main files that we want are in this data folder. So there are two files here. So these two files are as follows. So the candid data is Tremblaya princeps pci2.fa. So this file is a genome. So this is a genome of, a, of an endosymbiotic bacteria. As you can see, it's a really small genome. It's only 138 kilobase pairs, which is tiny, um, given that most bacterial genomes are on the order of megabase pairs. You know, two, two, three, four megabase pairs, and this is 0.14 megabase pairs. This is tiny. This is this is a, a tr this is a this is, used to be a beta proteobacteria. So this used to have a big genome, and uh, I don't know how many millions of years have passed. I think that I think that last I last number I've heard was 100 to 200 million years of evolution, of reductive evolution led to this tiny uh, bug that is now an endosymbiotic bacteria inside uh, mealybugs, so sap-sucking insects. And then this, uh, this highly reduced bacterium now essentially has one job, and that's to make vitamins and, and amino acids for its host insect. So the second file that we see here are, that we see here is the, uh, is reads from an RNA-seq experiment. So <clears throat> as you can see, this is a FASTQ file where you have the actual uh, header gene sequence, and then you have the quality score. Okay. And this course, this uh, RNA-seq is actually, this is RNA-seq data from the, from the insect. So these endosymbionts reside in, in a specialized organ within the insect called the bacterium. And uh, in this experiment, the bacterium was uh, bacterium was harvested and then DNA, RNA was extracted and then sequenced. I should probably mention the uh, paper where this is from. <clears throat> I'll include that in the, in the GitHub repo, actually, the citation for this study, because this is published data <clears throat> from, um, from my lab. Okay. So basically what I want to do in this tutorial is I want to go from the beginning because this is a very small subset of the data. So I kind of want to do the mapping and just show how basically have a um, from scratch make a count table. And by from scratch, I mean restarting with the basics, the genome, and the reads. Okay, so, and a lot of this is going to be, if you, I'm not gonna talk too much about the, the read mapping or the generation of a GFF file, which is necessary for HTC count, uh, but there is a mapping tutorial a lesson already out there for, and as I mentioned during the uh, during the during my lesson just now is that uh, if you'd like to learn more about read mapping, then I recommend listening to Ella Zirotsky's, uh lesson four for the metagenomics portion of BBCN. Okay, so but let's copy and paste the command from the walkthrough, and I'll basically we want to build the bowtie database out of the genome. It's going to take a second. We'll see that we have a couple of files here. Uh, and then we're going to run Bowtie. So Bowtie is basically going to map the reads back to the genome. So dash x, this is the, the database, the genome that we're going to map to. Dash u are the reads. So this is uh, actually, this is single end reads. So this is why 
we are using the dash u flag because dash u stands for unpaired. And dash s is the SAM output file. So as I mentioned during the lesson, SAM stands for sequence alignment map. So we're gonna generate a sequence alignment map by mapping the reads to the genome. And I also added a dash dash no dash anal flag. So this basically tells Bowtie to exclude from the sequence alignment map reads that don't map. And if you have a large data sets with a lot of reads and you want to minimize the amount of space that uh, is used, as these se sequence alignment maps are huge files that take up a lot of storage. Uh, and if you have a particularly small genome that you want to map reads to out of a larger data set, you can add this flag and it's the sequence alignment map is only going to include reads that map to this uh, genome. And it's not going to include the reads that don't map and that's going to significantly reduce the size of the sequence alignment map. Okay. Use of an uninitialized. Okay. I really don't know what this is. I haven't seen this before. But it looks like Bowtie finished successfully based on the overall alignment rate, which looks right. Uh, okay, so let's see. So we have the sequence alignment map here. Uh, good. Okay, so everything finished uh, successfully. We have our overall alignment rate. Uh, you can save this. This is good data here. Uh, okay, so we have one part of the equation. So HTC count actually has two positional arguments that are necessary to have it running. And those are an alignment file and a GFF file. So we have one, we have an alignment file. So now we need a GFF file. So I'm not gonna discuss GFF files too much. I will mention that in the functional annotation lesson one, uh, Ben Tully does talk about uh, uh, Orf prediction and uh, using prodigal. And uh, prod one of the outputs of prodigal is a GFF file. So if you uh, want to refer back to that lesson, um, you, can, you can learn about uh, how to make a GFF file. Uh, another lesson that is upcoming is PROCA. So I'm going to basically use PROCA here to generate the GFF file that we need without talking too much about how PROCA works because there will be a dedicated lesson for PROCA. Uh, PROCA basically is an annotation tool that uh, functionally annotates uh, a given genome uh, with respect to uh, coding regions, tRNAs, rRNAs, tmRNAs, it does everything and it, it has a really nice output where it provides you with the, the gene sequences, with the GFF file, with the gene bank file. So it's a, it's a really great tool. I recommend uh, attending the, uh, the lesson on that once that is live. Uh, but I kind of just wanted to generate the GFF file for HTC purposes. Uh, so this is the output. Procalls has a nice output where it creates a folder with today's date, which is June 8, 2020. So if you go into this folder, we'll see that there is a number of files. And this is the file that we want. Uh, so when you create a GFF file using PROCA, it actually uh, includes at the end of the GFF file the actual gene sequences, the actual um, the contig, the contigs you provide PROCA, and that's actually a problem for HTSeq. I've took me a while to figure this out, but I, I'm trying to use HTC using this GFF output and it kept crashing. And then I realized that it really doesn't like these sequences at the end of the GFF file. So we can filter that out with a, with a quick grep. So let me just grep that out. So um, grep is a, for those unfamiliar with command line, grep is a very nice tool that allows you to pull out certain lines from a file that match a certain uh, uh, certain string characters. In this case, it's a tab then followed by a CDS. So we're gonna pull that out. Whoops, okay. I guess I wrote this tutorial on June 19th, on May 19th. So we're gonna rewrite this a little bit and run this. 
if you want to learn more about uh, command line and all these cool tricks, I recommend uh, going over to Mike Lee's website, but Happy Belly Bioinformatics, and you're going to learn a lot. Okay, so now that we've pulled out, let me remove this because that's not the file we want. We've pulled out just the just these lines that match a coding region in uh, from the genome. Uh, just briefly, I'm also going to run a quick prodigal script to show that we can also generate a GFF file using prodigal with the GFF command. Uh, so with the dash F GFF uh, flag output, this is our input. And we're going to also, just for fun, we're going to output the gene sequences in fast amino acid format and then fast uh, nucleotide format. And There it goes, all done. So we basically now have two GFF files that we can use for HTC count. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the one from Procom. Just going to print the HTC count help menu just to have it up. And I'm going to copy the command, paste the command. Okay. So here we have the program. First positional argument is the SAM file. Second positional argument is going to be the GFF file. So actually, before I paste this command. Let's look at our GFF file because there are certain important parts of it that we want to know. So two pieces of information are important to know from your GFF file if you want to run HTC count. Let's see what's going on there. So the first is this third column. So when you run HTC, you want to specify which gene feature you're actually interested in. So when you have an output from PROCA, you're gonna have all the gene features combined in the same GFF file. Uh, you're gonna have CDS, you're gonna have tRNA, mRNA, rRNA. Uh, CDS, tRNA, mRNA. CDS, tRNA, rRNA, tMRNA. Uh, and when you run HTC, it's gonna ask you to verify which gene feature you want. Uh, the second piece of information that you want is this ID character. So in this case, we are telling HTSeq which of these, uh, so this last attributes column in the GFF file specifies all, all of the information about each gene feature that is not uh, present in these first seven columns, right? So here you have the ORF name, you have the enzyme commission number, you have the gene name, and on and on. Prediction method. Okay, so we want to tell uh, HTSeq which of these attributes we want to use. So the way you to know which attribute you want to use is you want to look at your um, You want to give it the locus tag because that's what it's going to use to create the the count table for you. So uh, the first column of the count table is going to have these values. Uh, if you give it the ID value, if you give it the name, if you give it name, then the first column of the count table is going to have this information, right? So you have control over that. 
Uh, and, and these uh, flags are here, the feature type and the attribute. So in this command, I specified that the dash T, the feature type will be CDS because I'm interested in coding regions here. And dash I, the attribute is going to be ID because I want the, uh, the locus tags to be the first column of the outputted counts table. Uh, okay, and then dash C is the output. So we're gonna, it's gonna be our output. And as I mentioned in the lesson, I typically exclude uh, ambiguously mapping reads. So I put dash dash non-unique none. So if a read is non-unique, that means if a read doesn't have only one gene feature that it maps to, but has more than one gene feature that it maps to, I want that excluded. Uh, here I included a reverse in the suffix of the file because the default option of uh, HTSeq is to assume that your, uh, oh wait, this shouldn't be reverse, this should be forward. Default <coughs> action of HTSeq is that your data comes from a strand specific library, default yes. So that means we're gonna put forward. So, because it's gonna only count the forward mapping reads. All right, so I think that's it for this command. I'm gonna hit enter and let it run. Okay, it's finished. We see that we have file here that it created. And there we go. The first column are the locus tags and the second column are the read counts. So the read counts are low here because I am using a, only a very small subset of the RNA-seq data. <clears throat> okay, so those are forward counts. But let's see if we want to rerun and we're gonna add the dash S reverse flag. So we just want to count the reverse mapping reads. I'm gonna run that. Finished. There. So these are all the reverse mapping reads. Okay, I think that that's actually it for this tutorial.